Hey everybody, welcome back to XCOM. This is Operation Chicken Roaster. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Uh, it's the second chain, or the second event in the chain to counter the dark event Undying Loyalty. We've got well-rehearsed and air patrols going on. We're taking out Yggdrasil, Weather Girl, Stone, who was carrying a Lost Lure. He is not anymore. Uh, Pool Mother, Beardo with the Frost Bomb, and Nightwolf I've given the uh, med kit to. And this is an interesting little combo of soldiers. A couple of faction soldiers. We've got our brand new uh, Keeper class in here. The Combat Engineer, which we did take out on a mission, but we didn't really get to utilize a lot. We've had a lot of weird missions so far. Uh, we're heading out to the slums to sabotage a transmitter. And uh, I'm hoping everybody comes back alive. Wouldn't that be swell? I think that would be, uh, that would be swell, in my opinion. Uh, let's rock and roll. Today's trivia question. Which soldiers in last season's campaign, War of the Chosen Season 6, saw the most other soldiers die on missions where they were present without dying themselves? It was a tie, so there's two answers you need to pick here. A, Stephanie Elixir Brown. B, Christopher Commander Odd. C, Marcus Tyrant Kincaid. D, Kaylee Rafe Parker. Or E, Rain Ripper Abraxa. In today's log, this is a final log from Rhiannon Tabula Wit, our KIA phalanx from episode two, written by Renegade Ginger. As Tab lay bleeding, the soldiers around her looked in shock and horror that she didn't bleed red or orange or even a sickly green. It was as if a sort of viscous flesh-colored gel was pouring out of her side. For a moment, she seemed to be losing cohesion in her form. No, not like this, she sputtered out through ragged, heaving breaths. They already killed my body once. Now they do it again, the bastards. Her hands were shaking, eyelids heavy over her crystal blue eyes as tears of mascara began moving down her cheeks. My name is Rhiannon Wit, Tabula Rasa, and uh, she choked, clenching a fist through the pain. I am free. In a burst of desperate rage, seeing herself seem more malleable, by the second, she raised her right, or her hand cannon, placing it to her temple. No fascist can kill me. Only I decide how I go. Fight on, XCOM. Fight until every chain is broken forever. And then darkness. Silence. And peace. <laughs> Yikes. I, I will try to record, kind of, like, epilogues for every soldier when they submit them. Try to make sure that they get read. We have one for waffles as well. And uh, hopefully we'll get one for Zenith. Advent has constructed a psionic transmitter in this area, tied directly into their primary network. Our intel suggests destroying it while it's still connected will severely damage their linked systems. Plant the explosives before they have a chance to pull the plug. Okay. Five? Five turns? You could be kidding. Oh, we've got these. Okay. <laughs> now, this is a neat little mission type. We usually see these in uh, in the sewers, I feel. Objective located. So this is kind of cool. Um, I think let's use as much of this front little cover as we can. It's let's not the this. greatest cover, but it's going to have to do. Uh... Pool Mother could go out there, I suppose. I think Nightwolf is probably a bit safer. But we are spreading fairly thin. You know what? Let's actually keep Nightwolf more way. centralized. Yggdrasil's movement is ridiculous. I'm going to go all out here. We're definitely spotting something. A turret, it looks like. That's lovely. Now, we could destroy that. We could destroy that. Uh, Beardo, I'm going to send you out to the half cover on this side. And Pool Mother... Well, it's a good question. Let's go here for now. I was just about to say, it would, it would suck to have to blow our reveal just for uh, destroying these things. This is actually a pretty decent group to open on. We, of course, do have the uh, the turret, but Weather Girl with 
what I would say is a pretty decent opening. Depending on if we blow it with our uh, with our scatter here, I'm actually happy to, to open in this position. Man, if we could land this and get that that turret that would be just insane i don't think i can pass this up so Fire let's rocket. light her up don't hit the truck oh turret trooper nice opening weather girl bring in the storm actually that would probably be yggdrasil wouldn't it yes yes it would okay now, the officer being back there is a little problematic, I suppose. That said... That said... I don't mind... Fragging that. The only thing is... I mean, I, I suppose, realistically, what I should do... Is just take this shot. If we hit the 24%, cool. We do have reinforcements in five turns, so we have kind of double management that we're doing now. I might just take out one of these... And then open up this Pathfinder with a grenade. Um, Night Wolf's Rend. How much damage are we looking at? Four to five. Yeah, that's that's a bit of a problem too. Although Stone, I guess we could toss another grenade for that Pathfinder. That's a possibility. Um, maybe Pool Mother's Grenade since she's a little further back. And then we could put uh, Nightwolf in to pick up that kill. Let's do that. Well done. As we had hoped, the network separation has been temporarily delayed. So, nice four damage again. Pool Mother should have, with that gun and her aim, a decent chance at that officer if... I can get in range, which <laughs> I can from here. So, stone, we're going to need to move up. I am oh, my God. I missed. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Nightwolf. That's a problem. I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. Oh, I wanted to. <laughs> it's fine. It's everything's fine. So Stone should actually come down here to take this shot against the officer. We only need the one damage. Then I need to bring Pool Mother in here to go for the frag grenade. And I might just have to blow this. Oh, that really that really was a unfortunate misclick. Orders confirmed. On the move. That really was unfortunate. I try look. Nice. Oh, that looked like a direct hit. I try to not reload misclicks because I kind of look at it as like a commander tactical error. I don't... F I feel like since we can easily overcome this with grenades, I'll, I'll leave it. But I kind of just will make that judgment call whenever we have to. Unfortunately, I will have to blow more grenades for this than I want. But that's life. Now this resupply... Oh, look at the range. Okay. So, resupply ammo. I, I was under the impression you'd probably have to be right next to them. So, there's quite a bit of range here. Reload the primary weapon of a targeted allied unit. Man, that's that could be quite powerful. That could be quite powerful. And then, of course, they get the special ammo benefits if we have that. Oh, we got a problem here. We got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, I'm gonna do something crazy. I should be out there hunting. I'm gonna do something crazy. <laughs> this is, that's that's costing us a lot. Now, in theory, this should work. You know what? All right, then. 
I'm gonna... God, we wasted so many grenades on this. Wait. I didn't even blow up the truck with that grenade? My bad. That was... Okay. Well, I didn't want grenades anyway. I hear tippy taps. Thankfully... Oh, do we see something here? No, but... I wonder if this is the turn where we take out a bunch of these things. I've got four in sight. As you command. Yggdrasil, you can build a little heat off these. There's this one here. Ammunition nearly gone. Uh, Weather Girl does see it. But then I can't move up. I suppose that's fine because of all the other stuff you have. And then where's the other one? Ah, right here. Don't know that I'm going to be able to get to that. Ah, uh, yes I can. Let's just hope this doesn't trigger a group here. <sighs> there's some, there's a group very close. Gotta be. I'll take out the one a little further. Oh, look! No, that's a civilian. <laughs> okay. Let's overwatch these two. Something's showing up. Yeah, there we go. Right out of the darkness. Okay. Nice shot, pool mother. It's weird having a Templar that's got, uh... That's got an Overwatch shot. Holy smokes. Because usually, in the previous season, we've been running them with the, uh the amps, right? So. Now, I I don't have... There's a couple of issues here. I don't have any lightning reflexes. We don't have any um, disorientation stuff that we can apply. So, getting in there is a little bit messy. I think what I'm going to do is run the Overwatch with Weather Girl. She's got the extra armor and the shielding, which is, you know, as we said, those shields are now gone. It's <laughs> great. I mean, that's decent. Here's our zone suppression that we can lay on. Um, I don't... It doesn't disorient, right? No, this one doesn't disorient. So, we need to kill that Pathfinder. There's no way around it. Um, we have a couple ways of killing the Sectoid. But I think the Templar is probably best suited. So our primary target's got to be Pathfinder. Moving to position. This is for you. Okay. So now I need three damage. Pool Mother's not not bad. Probably our best shot from distance. Uh, yeah, so this class, this could be really fun. Let me just look at the, the aim here. So weapon accuracy plus 8% from the bonus. Weapon range minus 5. So if I get closer, that's going to increase pretty dramatically. That said, I'd have to move into half cover in order to do it. But I'm not 100% convinced we're going to end up killing that trooper. Um, so I don't know if that's wise. Because what I could also do is reload somebody and then take that shot. That's this is a really neat class. This is really cool. I could reload Yggdrasil here. Let's see what the animations like. Oh. What? Oh, that is that is so sick. That is really cool. Okay. Fire on. Okay, I got a little too... 
I felt a little too confident, turns out. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, there used to be a building here. I suppose I could grapple up there, but then, like, the chance of finding another group is even more intense. Uh, damn, now what is the play? Now, what is the play? So maybe a suppression on that trooper. That Pathfinder... <laughs> I don't like... I don't like what he's got going on with stone here. Um... This, we can reposition, but it's super flanked either way. Yeah, I'm thinking I might have to take this position. I mean, we have the armor here as well. Six health. 50-50. If I go high ground, it would help for sure. But do we take that risk of triggering another group? I think I gotta flip the coin. Okay, the coin flips are getting very discouraging. Yeah, this is not my ideal scenario by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, okay, so now, now what's the play? So, I think a zone suppression here could help against the trooper in the sectoid. Remember, they're not going to be disoriented or anything like that. However... Their aim and mobility will be reduced, which should help. Um, Beardo, we still have a chance to kill that Pathfinder, but it's going to be low percentages. We do have the Frost Bomb. Okay, we could Frost, but man, do I hate using that Frost Bomb for this. I was going to say it. Okay. I was going to say statistically, one of these should hit. Because we launched a bunch of kind of mid-range shots. And it did work. Okay. So that that does clean things up just a bit for us. And now I feel like our stinginess with the grenades is okay. So I'm guessing what's about to happen. This guy's probably going to run. So I think just a regular suppression here will do. If we get lucky, we hit him when he leaves. He's not. He's shooting, which is fine. That's great for me. Okay. Now. We have reinforcements coming right away. Oh, that's new. He didn't even need to use his blades on this one. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> I would like to... would like to go up top now. Utilizing hook. If we see anything, we still have most of our soldiers with abilities, but it looks like we're clear. Which is lovely. Reinforcements coming soon, but if we can get the drop on them... I don't feel too bad about it. Weather Girl can overwatch. Beardo, you can take full there, and then we can move in. Pool Mother. I will. Okay. Let me just reposition over on this side. Let's get a reload on you. Now. This isn't, this is, man, this is such an interesting class. Um, this is really cool. I'm excited to see where this goes. So we can resupply Weather Girl, or we could Overwatch. The thing about Overwatching here is that our aim is pretty good. 
Or I could just take this out. Which also just buys us a little bit more time. Let's maybe do that. And then... Stone, I'm going to have you do this one. We're not picking up any more of those relays. That's all the time we're going to get, Commander. Let's see if anybody walks towards us here. Oh, yeah, well... We can pretty much expect that that's going to happen every turn. If they stay grouped like this, could be nice. Oh. Okay. Now, how much would I love to have... How much would I love to have... A defensive mine. I've got one. Uh, I do have one. The problem is that group in the back I can't really get to. Heading out. We're going to put this down. And then we're going to have to move, clearly. I think this is actually a... Well, I could put Weather Girl on this side. The only concern is a potential uh, potential mind control here. And maybe a, a Pathfinder flank, because their movement is just ridiculous. Uh, if I go here, then probably no flank, but definite target. But I think worth I it. it. Idrasil, I'm thinking here, and an Overwatch. So if they come out this way, I will go. Then we'll have a shot there. Uh, man, I would really like full cover where I can get it. No problem, boss. We're gonna Overwatch that. Now, man, do I ever want to run in there. But I don't even kill the sectoid anyways if I do. But, I actually, oh, I can't even reach them. I actually can't reach them. Okay. Okay. We are nearly there. Hmm. I think we're going to overwatch that. I think Stone will overwatch here. Pool Mother, I don't love this position. Because if, if that Pathfinder comes down and you're in the half there, it probably won't matter. <laughs> Let's reposition this side. I got one bullet left. Come on, baby. What are they dropping? That looks like a scary batch. Not gonna lie. Pathfinder, Advent Scions. Oh, nice. Okay, Priest is down. Oh, he immediately gets to raise the dead. So this is one of the new classes that we added. Obviously. Resist, Nightwolf. Of all people, resist. No grenades, please. Oh, boy. Wow. Those Pathfinders, they don't miss. At least it's a hunker down. 
Okay. 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 We can get out of this. We can get out of this. I think. Uh... Now this Scion, let's take a look at this. Soul Fire, guaranteed damage. Oh boy, okay. Uh, insanity. And Vortex Grenade. Now it also can raise the dead. I don't know why that's not listed here, but we just saw it do that. Throw a Vortex Grenade, does damage. It causes massive damage to the environment. Targets in the area have a chance to be stunned. Oh, okay. Just the Soul Fire itself. That's... That's not good. <laughs> That is not good. I am also hoping that if this thing dies, we we get to um, this thing dies as well. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Cool mother, what do you see from here? A lot. Can you resupply yourself? No, just curious. We would just reload, but wanted to see how that would go. Okay. Um, the frost bomb is a potential. The sectoid is right there. Um, I wonder. One, two, three. I bet you I might be able to hit both. If I were in this position, I could probably make that happen. This Pathfinder is a little bit of a problem, but we can just pick up the kill here. That means I'm down a melee, but that's fine. Ready to go. Zero percent chance. I like those odds. Okay. Now there is another Overwatch to run. Which you love to see. I think it's gotta be Weather Girl, unfortunately. Or we could we could maybe get away with this. And then Weather Girl gets to keep her position in that pretty good cover. I'm just considering, okay, maybe this should be our shot. We all in on this. But if we're going to freeze them, then I would say, yeah, no, I don't, I think we go for this. I can't hit both, but I can at least remove his cover. And we break this overwatch. Alright. I could put... This would actually be a much safer position, in my opinion. I'm just wondering about the angles. Right? We could preview our line of sight. And you can see here that we can see inside there. It's just a, it's just depending on whether or not I'll be able to hit this tile. But I feel much safer here. Okay. So, yeah. I'm not going to be able to hit both. Now, the grenade... Looks like it would have hit both from that side. I'll have to just take what I can get, I suppose. Grenade out. Now, this should release the, the thing. Good, the, the zombie. It freezes him. Now we have a sectoid out there. The thing is, this is four to five. Eighty-three percent. If this whiffs, what's the worst case scenario? 
Worst case scenario, we get flanked by this trooper. Actually, worst case scenario is another group. <laughs> another group on the map, which is totally possible, I suppose. Um, if I grapple, I don't really add any value here. Unless I'm... Unless I'm so confident that I'll land this shot on that Pathfinder. So I'd have to reload, grapple, go in on the Pathfinder, but then I'm exposed. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that plan. The other option is... I come here, and I shoot straight down, but this is where my Ripjack Strike is improved, right? So... 83 is pretty good. I'm gonna go for it. We gotta do it. Nice job. Nice job, Iggy. Nice job. Um, okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll reload this. 46%. It's not bad. We get some bonuses because of the frost. We get that plus 10 there. But we still have some problems based on distance and, and high cover. I could look at this again. See if there's any special spots. But I don't think so. I think that's a bit riskier than I'd like. Oh, nice. Okay. Full cover. Now, we are flanked by this trooper, but we've taken this into account. We have the armor. Yeah. Good job, Iggy. Good job. So, this is telling me that we're probably... This is probably the last... Like, we probably don't have any more groups. I still can't get into that sectoid range, though. That's unreal. That is unreal. Okay. So if I'm going to go for this, the sectoid could come down here and flank. It's possible. I think maybe now we go up. And reposition. Cool mother. I, I still can't believe that reload animation is that cool. Okay, now this is definitely going to be a situation where... Uh, this thing's going to crumble. For sure. Right away. This area should be safe. Nice shooting. Holy frick. Okay, okay, okay. I'm thinking if Beardo can pick this up, we're in a pretty good spot. We're very happy. Just wondering if I want to reposition somewhere else. It, it, we're kind of flankable from any which way if they decide to, to go for it. Uh, this thing showing up is from the subdue, 77%. It's not bad. Um, I haven't got into a lot of specifics about this, but in case people are wondering, the subdue, they need to be at 3 HP or lower, and they need to have taken damage. So if some if, if we had like a 3 HP unit, which I don't even think we have, but if we did, um, you couldn't just subdue them from full health. The other thing is uh, Nightwolf just guarantees damage here. So my only concern is if this thing like blows up or does something weird that I don't know about. Um, I could take this, and then do I have enough to get there? I do. If I could take this shot and then ripjack strike there. We also have uh, weather girl. Yeah, we we have plenty of options. You know what I'll do? I'm going to do this. Going in for the kill. I'm going to run and gun stone here. Not... Oh, God. I was going to say 93 would... Oh, damn! 
Oh, really? <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. Oh, now it shows. Wandering Curse raises nearby dead Advent Troopers. And it still does soul fire? Okay, these things could be absolutely devastating. That is kind of intense. Of course, we only get the three now. <sighs> love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Now, okay. With the flamethrowers, we know that the um, purifiers kind of suck for a bunch of reasons. We actually have a mod this season that's changing advent purifiers. Um, this one, I don't have enough experience with the class to know if it will go through cover. So there's one way to find out. Killing it with fire. Yes. Okay. That's how, like, actual purifiers should work, in my opinion. Um, I'm thinking we actually just do a medkit heal here now. Just to prevent any weird funny business. And then... We'll take this shot. If it lands, then we win. If it doesn't land... Okay. It didn't land. Which is fine. Hmm. Okay. I mean, we could run in there, but we're not going to kill. We need 8 to 9. Or we're, we could do 8 to 9. If it crits, though, the crit could be massive, but it had only 40% chance. There's no window in here. Let's do this for now. Alright. Let's test this again. We'll see how consistent this is. Time to burn. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Now, I'm noticing... He's not on fire. That sectoid. I, mean, I don't know if that's by design or... Or not, but my gut tells me they should be on fire. <laughs> Look at the destruction that we've caused. What an absolute gong show. Nice! Oh my god! Get those charges deployed. Her damage is ridiculous. Do I have a safe way of, of getting this? Is it worth it to set someone on fire? I think we probably get to pick it up regardless on this mission type. Oh look, there I can sneak in. Nice pathing there, Nightwolf. Wait, what? <laughs> uh okay. Ready to engage. Affirmative. On our There's no stopping this fire. Okay, I bet you it's down now. Yeah. There, weird. Hey, I'll take an Illyrium core, that's big. I'll happily take that.
Okay, guys, that was our first real challenge since the second mission, really. Oh, and the retaliation. But uh, that worked out extremely well. Got to experiment with those classes. Seems like the, the flamethrower through cover is like consistently applying, which makes it very strong. It's not applying burn. Maybe maybe the expectation is that it's hitting the uh, the tiles all around it. So if that unit then moves, they would catch the burn part of it. Uh, Iggy coming in with two out of four, seven damage. A lot of repositioning though, and drew that, that shot into full cover, which was really nice. Weather Girl absolutely crushing damage at 19. One for one shot accuracy with the Wi-Fi destruction. Uh, Stone No Mirror, 10 damage, three kills, three for six. That Scion is, wow, very scary. Pool Mother, tons of awards here. Six for seven, 24 damage. Overwatching two for two. Beardo three for four, 13 most exposed. And Nightwolf picking up the MVP, three kills, 14 damage. One for three on the Overwatches. That was, that was sick. That was sick. That was a that was a fun mission. A little bit um a little bit awkward at the that first part with that misclick. Setting us back a few grenades would have made that second half look quite a bit easier. I know a lot of people are gonna say just reload. And I honestly I probably should. <laughs> I probably should. Uh power relay facility provide a plus ten increase to power capacity when built on a power coil. We talked about maybe doing that. Okay, a couple promotions here. Beardo, well-deserved. Stone, a lot of people are tired, though. All right. So, Blast Padding, Skirmisher, Guardsmen. I really like Entrenched. Entrenched or Blast Padding is nice, to be honest. Getting that extra armor point this early could be pretty huge. Full cover. I'm noticing, especially when we run into uh, newer kind of modded map types. There's not a ton of full cover. I'm wondering if we're better off going blast padding here. It's a little bit more reliable with that extra armor point. The explosive damage reduction is not super important in my opinion. I'm going to take the blast padding. Stone. Okay. So... Here's one thing I, I didn't really experiment a lot with in the previous season, was this kind of Stormtrooper build, this prep for entry. Next grenade thrown or launched this turn will not cost an action, but throw range will reduce by 50%. Yeah, it's, it's hard to use, but if we're in close, we get to throw the grenade and we get to shoot with no cover. I'm going to... I'm going to select it. At some point, I'll want to get Honed Edge just for a more reliable um, sword attack. Now here, Tactical Rigging, the Psy Strike, guaranteed. The Parry is pretty good. Volt is pretty good. And if you empower this, uh, you get additional damage, bypassing shields and armor. Extra damage to robotics, of course, which pretty soon we're going to start to see. We've got that even more robots mod. We'll see, like, riot mechs and stuff. Um, I think a Psy Strike could be, could be pretty decent here. Of course, parry is nice. Parry is nice. This is, this is definitely the safest option. definitely the safest option this one allows like whenever we can bring people out of cover and stuff it's pretty huge i think this early we should probably stick with parry all right there's the two cores we got officer corpse trooper turret sectoids priest scions undying loyalty consider it countered now 
Oh, he got OCD. Chance to reload weapon to full after their first move action. Um, that's not that bad, to be honest, on this class, because they have the pistol, which most times is probably going to be full. Now, where are we at here? Rookies in seven days. I only have two people ready for missions, which I can guarantee is going to pose an, an issue here. Um, five days, five days, seven days. I've got Angerbot and Pool Mother. Uh, we might have to either not take a mission <laughs> or... Yeah. Or hire a bunch of rookies. We only have 86 bucks here, though. Avenger plotting new course. So, yeah. We got the Dark Event counter, but at what cost? Yeah, there we go. So, rescue a scientist. <sighs> hmm. I could hire a couple of rookies for this. There is that nice dodge boost there as well. When does this expire? One day, 22 hours. I actually couldn't even hire two rookies for this right now. Because I only have 86 bucks, right? Aren't they 45 each? This is, the, this is going to be really tough for the next little while, all of this layer. Yeah, 45 each. Nil Ross and, and Bobo. Uh, yeah. Now, if I don't do that mission, I'm not going to feel horrible about it. Because we, we did get an extra scientist. If that was an engineer, I would feel way worse. Um... So I think I'm going to have to pass on this right now. Plus, when this is done, we would then have to load a bunch into infiltration, and we're already kind of a little bit behind. So I think I'm just going to let that go. We're going to let it expire. I would love to see these rookies complete here. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Boltos is back. Rookies. Okay, we got two. Temulin Zaya and Chasu Bao. I mean, that's nice. That's awesome. Old World Bunker. Prototype items. You know what? Might be worth it. Okay. So now we're starting to see a lot more green. Two hours here on Stargrave. 32 hours on Nomir. Who's new here? Temulin Zarenity Zaya and Chasu Takeout Bao. 63 aim, 66 aim here, little bit of dodge, really, really low will. Like, these will numbers, this one and the other rookie that we saw in the recruit pool are extremely small. Uh, Temulin Serenity Zaya, nice to have you here. Let's meet you from Mongolia. I love the outfit. Really, really cool. Okay. Zaya comes from one of the few nomadic tribes left in Mongolia prior to the invasion. A daughter to a family of already five other children, she wasn't meant to make a mark. None were, really. Save for just supporting the family, living, thriving, and surviving if need be. Traditions ran long and deep, consequently allowing them a mundane existence by our standards, but a content one for them. Said perspectives melded once the invasion ended. By that time, she was almost an adolescent and soon had to march into very unfamiliar surroundings with the rest of her family, friends, and comrades. Their destination was a, was a citizenship camp, ultimately feeding them into the local Advent City network. While the region was undeniably rural in nature, a new city was sprung up around the old Ulaanbaatar, which became their home, albeit quite confusingly so for the near future. The adjustment was as alien as the supposed benefactors of this new world, and as such, escape became a dream, one of plains, sand, and horses, clear skies above and crisp air below. It proved a constant call for not only them, but many who had been coerced into the city. 
For some, it was irresistible, including her parents. They planned to leave for good, to return to their prior lives, for this society held nothing for their children, and as such, nothing for them. This society wanted them, though, which became known as soon as they sought to leave with several other families. Interesting. They proudly and calmly walked out for the planes, but Avent soldiers soon arrived. They would not attack, though they would not yield. As cries of infants and general discontent came a new, much more pervasive cries came anew. Should be like this, I think. Much more pervasive cries came. Advent had some tests of their own to conduct, and this one was with crowd dispersal, and it did its job too well for young Naya. Uh-oh. At first came terror as that low hum from the Advent machines overtook her parents' voices, and eventually choking her own cries of confusion. While others could, she could not hear anymore. With no recourse, they had to correct it at an Advent clinic, which succeeded, but a second device was activated. One which gave her hearing but twisted the words of everyone around her in accordance with Advent's will. She's find... Oh, she'd find that out in due time, and around then, she was old enough to brave the soldiers, the walls, and finally the planes. It only took one mistake from Advent's collective might, and she was free, back to the planes of her youth. She found her way to a nearby haven, alone, where she'd been a guard ever since, developing into quite the capable soul. With XCOM's call came a re realization, a chance to perhaps turn this alien world into something that could become more familiar, more safe, more, and quite truly, serene. Whoa. Okay, I wonder how that's going to come into play with the, um, like, Advent controlling what she hears. Like, I wonder now if it's just kind of like a garbled mess. Who knows? That's really well written, Serenity. Holy smokes. Genius combat intelligence as well. Hello, Siamp. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Chasu Takeout Bow looks not quite fit for battle, um, but that's fine. He's got a waffle sack, and he's genius as well. Okay. Okay. We'll take it. From Hong Kong. Uh, under Advent's regime, Chasu was content. He had a decent job, a sense of security, and an Advent burger only a block away from his apartment. It was a trip to this Advent burger that would turn his entire world upside down, unbeknownst to him. Resistance operatives in the area planned to sabotage a nearby monument. Advent peacekeepers had been tipped off with info that the explosives were being hidden in an Advent burger takeout bag. They cordoned off the area and started searching citizens. Chasu noticed someone leaving his takeout bag and walk away from the scene, not realizing what was going on. He assumed the guy had simply forgotten his food and helpfully went to return it. His commotion caught the eye of an Advent trooper who ordered him to present the bag. Being a law-abiding citizen, Chasu readily submitted the bag for inspection, but was horrified to discover that instead of a lunch order contained explosives, he found himself flanked by Advent soldiers with their weapons trained on him. Chasu dropped to his knees, tried to convince the peacekeeper that the bag was not his, and then he was merely holding it for someone. The peacekeeper was not convinced, ordering Chasu to surrender. Chasu noticed the explosive flashing uh, forebodingly in the peacekeeper's hand and tried to warn the officer, but was kicked to the ground instead. A second later, there was a small crater where the Advent peacekeeper once stood. <laughs> An explosion caused a panic in the crowd. Chasu scrambled for cover behind a security tower. Advent opened fire on him. Chasu knew he was done for sure. Suddenly, Advent soldier starts to go down. Someone was firing back. Chasu used the distraction to scurry away, not knowing where to go. He felt someone tug at his arm. It was the man who had left the bag. He guided Chasu out of the fire zone. They made it to his transport where he was about to load Chasu in when he was struck from behind. An Advent soldier had managed to catch up and get a lucky shot on the soldier. The man fell, dropping his rifle. The Advent soldier approached, taking, him once, taking aim once more. On instinct, Chasu picked up the rifle and pointed it towards the enemy. He squeezed the trigger. And then was staring at the sky. The recoil of the rifle had knocked him on his back. He checked to see if he hit his target, but found him unscathed. There was a brief exchange and pulled his... Uh, there was a brief exchange and missed shots before Chasu gave up on the weapon and pulled his rescuer into the transport. They managed to escape with Chasu, now a fugitive. Chasu was not cut out to be a soldier, but neither was he an engineer or scientist. So in order to stay in the relative safety of the resistance, he had to take up arms, which makes sense with why he is not geared up. This is sick. Still, his risk adverseness proved useful as he would always be on the lookout for an escape route when things inevitably went sour. Chasu fought not for freedom, but to survive for the slim chance he might, have, he might find a way back to his old, comfortable life. Dang. Man. 
<laughs> uh, I don't know what to say, you guys. Really, really impressive stuff. Takeout, happy to have you here. Uh, albeit with some unforeseen circumstances along the way. Appreciate it. Um, Pool Mother did not get promoted. Little rough there. Seven out of eight. Very close, but was hoping for that promotion. Okay, rapid excavation is going to be done soon. I think I probably use that here on the power coil. Uh, that'll give us a nice little boost of income. And I think we'll hold off on hiring additional rookies now. Commander, we've got local resistance forces waiting to make contact, but we'll have to make the first move. Yeah. I do need to get my resistance ring up and running very soon. Um, we're going to have to build power here, I think. So we'll take the free excavation there, put power for now, and then we can reconfigure that later on. Um, in this spot, we could save it for the resistant or the, uh, what is the thing I'm looking Hello, for? I don't even know if it's in here yet because I think we have to research it. Anyways, let's get going. Prototype items, 12 days, but these could be really nice. I don't know. We have a lot of things building. Maybe this is more advantageous since we're so short on engineers. We have eight people ready now. Force level two. It is just as I had hoped, Commander. Commander, with the Advent officer currently in cold storage. Alien data cache. As soon as possible. I don't think we need to tackle that right now. Um, we're definitely going to need the proving ground up soon. Resistance comms, I would say, is probably our top priority at the moment. I foresee a number of valuable applications stemming from this technology. I'll have a report assembled as soon as the research is complete. Hey, come and on. then, I I have to wait for this to finish. But when it does, we can expose the the power coil. 23 out of 30 crew. Uh, once we build a lab or a workshop, we'll take the engineers out of that. We can upgrade this, I believe, in the... Is it commander's quarters I need to do that? Maybe resistance quarters or living quarters. Yeah. So crew size 1, 100 supplies. Crew size 2, 200 supplies. So we can get this up to 40 and 50. If you guys don't know, in covert infiltration, all of your crew goes into that total crew count. Uh, if you go over, you start taking massive penalties. Uh, so we didn't we didn't go over last time, last campaign, but all right, black market is open. Our actions have succeeded. Couple promotions here on Sarah and Hopper. Beautiful. Let's go see what they are. Okay, so what do we need? <laughs> we need Marines. Uh and we need we're good for sappers but we need we need marines phalanx well i could live with that let me see what's your dodge your dodge is 12 actually that's pretty solid what's our other options here sarah has no dodge assault infantry and field medic okay so, I'm thinking we probably want to take, probably want to go field medic here since we have two assault infantry. And then phalanx here because we have the dodge. That'll work. I think that suits you too. You just seem like that kind of rough and tumble type of guy. Go we'll field medic on this one. Okay. So we've got a pretty decent balance. Still, Marines, absolutely nowhere to be seen. Gotta love that. Uh, GTS in seven. Two days here. Infirmary in seven. Reapers in six hours. Great. Well, you're really starting to get on the elders' nerves. Ooh. Interesting. 
The Elders never had any issues targeting civilians, and their Chosen are no different. The Resistance is counting on us to protect their people. We can't let them down. Okay. So, I find myself often doing this. I'm gonna actually sort this problem out right now. It's not a problem, but, uh... If you go into the Squad Select, then you can turn off Autofill Squad. I could even turn off Skip Intro. And then when we go into here, we're in right away. It doesn't do like that slow fade. And this will all be empty and we can just populate this however we want. Uh, so this could be another decent opportunity to get some alloys, get some money. Uh, I also could argue I don't really need to get it, but I think I think we should go for it. Uh, what do we want to take out here? So I think if we can, let's take people with very high will so they might be able to come on a, a follow-up mission. Let's do that. Reactor 4, you can come. Uh, Serenity, I'll bring you as a rookie here. Schmidt. You can bring Stone. And... Maybe we'll bring Angerbot. So let's bring the Frost Bomb here. Reactor, you take the Med Kit. Who's got the best aim? React. Oh, yeah. Your aim's actually insane. You do have the Bull Pop. Uh, we could actually give you things like the the Sniper Rifle. Which would kind of be an interesting, different build here. That could be kind of cool. Maybe not right now. We'll leave the bullpup. We'll leave the bullpup for now. Stone will go traditional sword. I could also try knife fighter. Knife attacks against nearby enemies within three tiles. Use one action. Do not end the turn. Kind of neat. Knife attack requires one action. They have a plus 25% chance to crit. We get more damage here. And the extra aim on the swords. Uh, this sword should give the aim as well. Base game swords. Hmm. The other thing this does is armor pierce. We don't see it. Well, I guess against uh, Pathfinders, armor pierce is kind of nice. You know what? Let's take a knife. Let's do it. No lost here. Then I'm going to have an assault rifle to give to someone. You can take this one. And do we want to maybe give that carbine to somebody? It's a really great weapon. Still does 4 to 5 damage versus the assault rifle of 3 to 5. You get the aim buff. It's got uh, everything else the same. <laughs> you just don't get to put weapon attachments on. But right now, I'm totally fine with it. So, I think this is a good group to bring. We've got the combat engineer with rockets, with the defensive mine, with the flamethrower, the cannon. We've got uh, the medkit here, our rookie. Now, I could argue giving the rookie the carbine isn't a horrible idea as well. Man, four health. Yikes. I wonder if it's worth me taking this only 15 supplies. You know what? I think I'm going to do that. Just to try and keep our rookie alive here. 
And uh, this will be another one where we try to kind of go in precision, get a few crates and get out. Again, aiming for three would be great. Two, probably not worth our time. Uh, four, like last time, would be exceptional. And you guys actually seem to really enjoy the last um, supply mission. So nice little change of pace here as well. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.